Hey, that's pretty good. The Raptors win for the first time in over a month. March 3rd was the last W. 117 to 111. They defeat the Milwaukee Bucks, who, it's true, they didn't have Giannis Antetokounmpo out there. They didn't have Thanasis Antetokounmpo out there. That Antetokounmpo, the plural. Kenneth Liu, or Kenneth Lau says, the tank has stopped. At 15 games, the Raptors have stopped the Buck. It stopped here with the Bucks. Really fun performance in this one. And I, not to be too much of a nerd, but I thought like the the most interesting aspect of this game was the Raptors' pick and roll defense, which was really good against Damian Lillard. And I gotta wait till we're about a minute into this because there's gonna be a curse word that, like attached to it. But my God, the Bucks, the decision making I thought was just unbelievable um most notably for the raptors i think rj and emmanuel in different ways displayed an indomitable will a lot of free throws between the two of them they they combined for 26 free throws by the way that's a lot now part of those free throws were the bucks this team they play like jackasses i don't know what's going on i saw i haven't watched the bucks in a little while I saw the, the, you know, the tweets of the quotes flying around about this team. You know, they're saying like, we're unprofessional. Why is everybody so comfort comfortable with like X or Y? The team plays crazy basketball. The amount of self-inflicted mistakes. They couldn't get their coverage correct on the Spain pick and roll like once down the stretch. And it was so bad that they couldn't just not defend it. They couldn't defend it without fouling, not even on ball, but on like the back end of it. It was like they couldn't navigate a back screen. I, I don't, I'm not so sure I understand what's going on. Like I, they, they played goofy basketball, jackasses. Lewis Aspen says they triple teamed the ball handler after Olenek fell over. I mean, Lewis, hop on the call, man. You're the Bucks writer. Let's talk about it. What the hell is going on with the team? Focusing on the Raptors, though. Gary Trent Jr. brought both his finesse game and the lunch pail. He brought it, man. He had 31 points, two steals, three assists, five boards, 11 of 22 from the field, 7 of 15 from downtown. Rarely is that like you see the guy calling for the ball, clapping the hands. Get it, get it to me, get it to me, get it to me. And then they bang a triple. Twice in this game, Gary was like, Stop worrying about the play. They're shading to you, Emmanuel. Just one pass away. Give me the ball. And he just can triples afterwards. Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, no Giannis is meaningful. But the Raptors played, you know, just Dame earlier in the season. And Dame popped the hell off. Now, I understand Dame had 14 free throws in this game. I understand he finished with 36 points. But he also, as far as like used possessions, turnovers, he had seven. Had to go to the line 14 times. Took 24 shots. The Raptors, with playing at the level of the screen, shading really hard to the pocket pass, and pinching in really hard on the strong side, kind of forced Dame into like, are you pulling up? How often are you pulling up? Do you feel comfortable pulling up in the flow when you get a little bit of pressure? And there are times where Damian Lillard in the past has just been like a heat pump. And in that exact position, he'll destroy you. In this game, forced passes, sloppy idea of what he wanted to do, seemed out of sorts, had to turn it on late by driving. But the Raptors were inviting him to drive the whole game. and He just wouldn't take it. And he was kind of like lazy with it. I mean, man, the process was really, really odd. Chris Middleton has been in a weird space the past couple of years. You know, HY here says, Abaji, great defense. I do think Ochai had like quite a few possessions where he impressed a ton. That's how you go through a game scoring three points and still end up a plus 20. Be the best point of attack defender on the roster. And like, that's not a manual's, that's not a manual's check. That's never going to be the case. Ochai, he stepped out there, led the team in plus minus. Why? Because he was the absolute linchpin 
Usually that's at the back end, but at the front end of things, he simplified a lot of what they're able to do. Contain, force wide with the chase, so that Kelly, he he has more room to navigate as the guy at the bottom of the screen, right? So that it's easier for Kelly to navigate the distance between the two. If you turn that corner really quickly, if, if Ochai can't get Dame wide, then it gets a lot more hairy for him. Pretty good stuff from Ochai. Quiet game offensively, but I don't mind that. He's just like Ochai, his best game is going to be one where he has like a very clear defensive matchup that he can operate in, like tonight, and where he can pull up triples and gets hit on a lot of back cuts. It was the same thing with Utah. It's the same thing here, except there's more cutting in this offense. There wasn't a lot of opportunities for him to go get the ball for himself to score. He was very no frills on offense, but he brought it all. Maximalist defense. RJ 26, 7, and 2. Gary 31, 3, and 5. Quickly one assist shy of a triple double with 25, 11, and 9. Three steals as well. I thought the ball pressure from a lot of the guys was more impressive in this game. I thought that the defense at the bottom end of the team was much better. I don't know what Darko said, and I don't know if this is also just like the Raptors absolutely just mashed the heat right after the Siakam trade. And that, and it kind of set the tone for like, wow, is this the ceiling of the team? But part of that was like jackassery on behalf of the Heat. They had obviously been partying in Toronto the night before, if I can say so much. And you know what? There is a certain element of jackassery here from the Bucks. But credit to the Raptors. They brought the lunch pail. The reason why they won this game was resilience on both sides of the court. They stuck to scheme. They brought their lunch pail to it. They worked within it. And then on the other end, guys like Quickly, guys like Barrett, head down, getting to the bucket, pressure, pressure, pressure. Make digs, dig in with, you know, like conviction. Make them care. We got a bunch of good performances. Grady, tidy little 10 points, five boards, only a minus three. Pretty good. Can a big three late. Dame came down behind the back btb btb between the legs snatch back step back bangs a triple and guess what the other end the ball finds grady cans it nice to see that response it's not the same type of three of course but yeah steel man 65 says dude we're still without scotty and yak agreed yeah i don't think they come back for the rest of the season um Yes, totally. This this was a fun game, man. I, Jeff Beardwood says, if we could rebound, we'd have won this in three quarters. I know we're missing Yak and Scotty, but box out. Well, hmm. I mean, the, the Bucks did play smaller than I thought they would. Like, Brooke playing 20 minutes, I was, like, kind of surprised. But mind you, they didn't really win this. Like, he, they didn't win his minutes at all. In fact, he, he didn't have a very good game from a defensive point of view. And then also, I think Dame, they kind of liked how he operated better with Portis in there. I understand why that is. And Portis can give you some of that volume. I think Portis was like a plus 10, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, plus 10. 19 and 10 in this game. He missed the shots late when they were forcing his hand there. And the Raptors, I mean, like, they navigated a couple versions of the Bucks in this game. And the Bucks, like, man. They, they came hard at the end. They brought it. And Dame really tried to get them over the hump. Like he was driving, getting to the line. But their defense, man, unforced errors. Crazy. Like the fact that a Damian Lillard pick and roll going head to head against the Raptors who, you know, like as much as I like quickly, he's not the same level of pick and roll ball handler as Dame. The Raptors are doing like ball reversals into high post. and then. Like you just like flash middle and RJ gets in the middle catches and like his catch on the right pound dribble turn to the left to just like float the ball in that is better offense than what the like the Bucks were able to muster up except the Bucks have Dame. You know, Chris Milton is still like a, a max player to some degree, too, and he he can the one like hang dribble pull up. But man, like the Raptors, the process worked better than the Bucks process. They scored better late. And then the Bucs just like on some possessions just pissed their pants, man. I couldn't believe it. 
Nuts. Andre Jackson Jr., by the way, canned one triple was like hellacious. Truly, truly hellacious. And he almost, one of the craziest things I've ever seen, almost one of the craziest things I've ever seen, that ball went up, he comes flying in, he smacks the ball off the ground, goes up in the air like 20 feet, and then bounces in the cylinder and brrr, rims out. I was like, whoa. I, I didn't want it to go in because I wanted the Raptors to win, but I also was like, that would be truly astounding if that found the bottom of the cup. Anyway, it fell out and the Raptors ended up, you know, clearing it on that possession. The boards, yeah, this is something that we're just going to see. The Raptors are a very small team. Every night, every night a very small team. They will not be a big team until Scotty Barnes and Jakob Pertl are back in the lineup. Sheer Khan says, Samson, do you think Scotty is going to be back for a game or two before the end of the season? Quite frankly, I doubt it. It's... I don't know why the Raptors would ever rush him back. So he would have to be like way ahead of schedule, perfect conditioning, get right back in the swing of things. And the likelihood or, you know, chances of that being the case, I don't think are very strong. But, you know, Scotty's a gamer. He might get back in there if he's really demanding it and he feels awesome. But for like a game or two, it's it's hard to see that being the case. Especially since we see a lot of like rest on the roster, right? Soreness being dealt with, healthy scratches almost, it seems like. So forcing Scotty back because Scotty's a player of some consequence. His impact could swing a game when the Raptors, let's be frank, a tank is going on, man. They're like, they're tanking. So it didn't work tonight, but they they lost 15 in a row, so they didn't have to worry about losing a spot on Tankathon or in lottery percentages from this game. They stopped short of the franchise record for losses and they found their way to it. It's nice. You know, Jay Alexander says, rest the all-star. He's done enough. And also like, even just like rest, he broke his hand. I broke the same bone in my hand and I have a metal plate in my hand now. It's like breaking your metacarpal is like a, well, I broke, I broke two at once, but it's a big deal. You know, Scotty, that's like, he's he's certainly done enough, but he's he's not healthy yet. You're like, it takes a while, especially in a game that's, you know, predicated so much on like touch and, you know, being able to like make the basketball do things with your hands as the instrument, the medium with which you operate. Uh, you Breaking your hand is not an easy thing to overlook or just like bypass. That's the Scotty part of it. Javon, wow. I just saw his name on the box score, but like such a gutsy drive late, maybe with like five or six minutes left. Push dribble ahead, gather, take the bump, get outside the body, finish soft off the glass. I was like, man, nice take. But if there's a if there's a superhero, you know, it's man, if there's a superhero, it's scary in this game for sure. Just the way he was able to, like, hot injection, just like NOS, able to supercharge the the offense basically from nothing, right? Like, he hit his catch-and-shoot triples, but also, like, he's bringing the ball up the floor, quick drag screen, step up, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's like, bam, there it is. Um, barcode says, Barnes and Russ broke their finger slash hand around the same time. Russ is 10 years older and playing. I suspect that Russ broke his finger. Scotty broke his hand. There's a big difference as far as like, as someone who broke the same bone, I had to get surgery. There's a metal plate in my hand, right? Um, forever. Breaking the inside of your hand is a lot different than breaking a finger that you can like tape and stuff like that. I have nerve damage as a result of this injury. So it's different. And like comparing those types of injuries is just like it's apples and oranges. It's almost always different, right? OG played with a broken finger or a fractured finger last season for a couple weeks and then had to get surgery on it. But it was like the finger. Scotty broke his hand, you know, um, it, it's just completely different. So uh, Ion says, what does Gary shoot from three at the wings? I swear he never misses from there. I'll, I'll look that up for you. But Gary, I was really, really impressed with this game. I mean, like. Just it's that run and gun aspect. He's the gunner on the Raptors. He's been very, very consistent in this role this season, especially after all the trades and the Raptors were kind of like 
everything became super, super, you know, inconsistent. And there was injuries and there was changes and there was trades. And Gary was vaulted into a situation where more shots came his way. And as a result, he's just been much better. Non-corner threes. Gary Trent Jr., 41%. He's hit 139 of 337 this year. Uh, that's what cleaning the glass has him at. And he hit some tonight, obviously, at seven threes tonight. So I'm sure he's over 140 for above the break, maybe at 142 or 143 now. 40% is like, or 41% is very, very good above the break for anybody who's wondering. Uh, he's not as good from the corners, 36%, but certainly passable. It's just like he's shooting the hell out of the basketball above the break. Um, Always forget at the top concurrent viewers, make sure to like the video. It uh, helps push it in the algorithm, et cetera, et cetera. We finally have like a win to talk about. So thank you to everybody for popping in. My goodness, man, these, these things have been so few and far between. I was just watching the game and a leg and his sister and, and like a leg looks at me. He's like, wow, you get to talk about a win. He's been watching me. You know, I come back from the game. It's late. No win. I watched the game with him in the living room. No win. Every time coming back to this desk and saying like, hey, that's pretty bad. You know, I, somebody tweeted at me. Uh, Cocoon Man says beating the Bucks. It's what we do. Certainly. I The Bucks. Some, somebody mentioned like, why, why would we expect the Bucks to be, you know, good at defense? And because it's like Malik Beasley and Damian Lillard. Yeah, that's abhorrent. Also, like the overall attentiveness that the Bucks displayed as far as like in terms of cutting, hardly anything. As far as like supporting Dame's pick and rolls on the other side, because like, you know, the Ra as we talked about the Raptors, they were mostly playing like at the level of the screen or hedging. And they're making sure that Ochai, in a lot of the cases, is able to chase Dame wide and the hedge helps keep him wide. And then they're keeping that you know, that space for the pocket pass, they're denying it. They're bringing the help from the bottom so that there's no lob pass. They shade to it. And on the strong side, they pinch in. And like the farther you make them get wider, that means the pinch in has to pinch in less. And that means that they're farther away from the one pass away guy. And the bucks on the weak side, just like not a lot of motion. They're not really helping it. It's like a pick and roll is a two-man action, yes. But a pick and roll as a team is like should feature some movement elsewhere and become a five man action. Even if it's like one pass away, sure, the guy in the wing, maybe there's not much motion. But like on the back end, you got to lift and the other guy, you got to fill and you might even like cut middle, right? Or you may, you could even like, there's just a lot of things you can do. And the Bucks, there's just like not a lot going on. Somo says Dame is having an awful season. Hiring Doc was a huge mistake. You know, it's Dame is not shooting the three very well. And then you look at, um, you look at, uh, like all the statistics. You can, I think I've seen maybe like 12 or 13 box games this year. There's like, <laughs> it's, it's been a rough year, man. And the Bucks, they seem like they're just a husk of themselves at this, at this point in time. Hiring Doc. I mean, I'm not like the biggest like make fun of Doc guy, but I'm certainly not like a oh Doc is awesome type of guy. The team I think was trending this way with Adrian as well. This team just seems like it's, you know, walking towards its grave almost. It's yeah, soulless husk almost seems like it. I don't know if Lewis can write a piece like that. You know, with Raptors Republic full editorial, whatever, he can write the like. The Raptors look dead piece. I don't know about like, I don't know what the Bucks situation is, but they might need that piece. They're no longer, you know, an elephant. They're a rope and et cetera, et cetera. The whatever, you know, uh, metaphor he used in that, in that one piece that I really loved. Lewis is making sad, sad faces in chat. Emma says go. Hello, Emma. I think uh, OG is uh, coming back soon. So that's fun. Jay Alexander says, no, Giannis definitely helped tonight, and they messed up when they fired Coach Bud. I'll tell you this much. No, Giannis is maybe the most important factor in this game, and then we can start talking about other things. But you're still 
playing Damian Lillard and Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez and a Bucks team that is trying to win every game. They played good tonight. The Raptors, they beat them. Like, I don't think the Bucs played good tonight. I'm saying the Raptors played good tonight. They won a game. They battled for it. And Jay Alexander says they messed up when they fired Coach Bud. That might be the case. I think Bud is a good coach. I really do. But, again, there's all types of interpersonal stuff that goes into those coaching positions. Soft skills. Coco is in chat. She just said OG played tonight. Hell, yeah. I'm late on that, but she was, you know, in chat two games ago now. was talking about soft skills, how important they are for these interpersonal situations. It's true. But I, I, I always thought Bud was a really good coach. It wasn't, I did, it wasn't surprising to me that the Bucs won with Bud as their head coach, even as people were kind of like making fun of him and his uh, apparent inability to make, you know, make changes and, and counters and stuff in the, the playoff situations. But I don't know. He was a good coach. I think it was really tough to move on from Bud. Like the rap, like Nick Nurse is a very strong coach. Left the Raptors into personal stuff. But like the fact that the Raptors went from a good coach in Dwayne and found a really good coach in Nick Nurse, that's not the guarantee. That is not guaranteed to happen in these situations. Um, My Thompson says, why aren't you watching the women's March Madness game like everyone else? My, this is my job. I come talk about this game after every single game. I am wearing my WNBA hoodie in, in solidarity, I suppose. But um, I wish I was watching it, kind of. But the Raptors won for the first time in a month. We got to talk about it. This is the way it works. This is this is what it is. You know, even when there wasn't women's basketball popping the hell off, I had to be here when there wasn't something better to watch, you know? Um, yeah. We talked about RJ quickly. I do think I'm still waiting on quickly. It's been a little bit, um, been a little bit disappointing. Some of the pick and roll decision making. It's been a lot easier for teams to get him to take negative dribbles. Sometimes when he's trying to get the edge, he gets wide and picks up his dribble above the break. And I'm looking for some more meaningful progression. But he does have some nice plays in this game. And early on, even though he's still only you know three for eight from downtown. The way that Gary's able to get threes up sometimes, I'm like, man, I wish quickly had had, had a little bit of that. But there were a couple of plays where quickly that throw ahead dribble into space, cash a triple on the pull. That's really nice. The attempt he took late in the game, I was it was a very quick trigger. He got it up between the contest at the front and the rear view contest too. I liked that he pulled it. You know, it's um that's that's kind of that's that's fun to see. Grady, I, I still really like watching him work out of the of the triple threat. I thought that he's been, you know, impressive. And that's really important for him because his handle does not let him get places really. However, he's really his footwork out of the triple threat does allow him to get a step on some guys, and he's a bigger player. So that will be more meaningful in the future. I thought he was pretty slick tonight. As I said, only a minus three earlier. Just kind of popped in, was in the gaps. Of course, he's not a dominant defender. He's not even average at this point in time. Of course, he's a negative, but he was in the gaps. He was where he needed to be. Some nice rotations made. Hit some shots. Ion says, Grady's reverse layup is awesome. His touch around the rim is nuts, man. He, like, inside hand lay, outside of the body, like, push shot, English, you know, reverse. It's both hands, right? He can definitely, he's got a real strong finishing package. I really loved watching that. And, you know, Jordan Wara, he was a minus 11. The defense was the, was the tough part for him. But he had a nice little stretch where, like, his dribble penetration, even if it didn't end up netting him, like, a bunch of points or assists, it got the ball moving and it got the defense rotating. There were a couple plays where it wasn't a Wara assist, but, like, a side top side action that he began the rotation for, and he created something. That was nice to see. RJ, of course, pushing the ball forward, insatiable in how he drives. He always wants to find the rim. You know, that's that's kind of where we're at. And and Kelly, I mean, Kelly, he played a good game. The, the boards weren't necessarily there, but this was the best pick and roll defense I think I've seen Kelly play as a Raptor. Like, the bar is pretty low, but he, he – and honestly, like, we saw – I don't know how many times we saw drop, but I saw a meaningful amount of at the level hedge and like a couple hard hedges 
and then like one switch late, and he was he was moving those feet, chopping them, shuffling those puppies, and you know as Coco says here, rooting for Ponytail Kelly, he switched up the look, the little ponytail at the back, you know, pretty slick. He looked good tonight, and and it is that like, he's just the hub, he he really is. He's the hub. They get the ball there. It enters Kelly's hands on offense. They know it's safe until they organize themselves and get ready to run X or Y. And that's kind of like he's very important to what the Raptors do right now as an unsuccessful team and to facilitate the possessions that the Raptors want to have. They want Grady to get a certain amount. They want Quickly and Barrett to get a certain amount. Like these things they want desperately. And you throw the ball into Kelly. He'll organize. Guys will get touches. They'll get a step on their defenders. They'll get a chance to face like dropping bigs. They'll get a chance to get these reps going downhill, making reads against the weak side zone. Even in a game where like he was averaging like an absurd amount of assists. He had like a four game stretch where he's averaging 9.3 assists or something like that. And in this game, it's 12 points and two assists. It's, you know, and honestly, he went to the line six times. It's, um, it, it's been it's been nice to watch him help facilitate guys coming along. Uh, Slow Mo says Grady will continue to show he was the right pick. Would be nice if Raps can hit on two of the basically three first round picks they have. Yeah, um, Slow Mo, you and I are. I thought Grady was the right pick. I was excited that they were able to get him at thirteen. I really love his process. We're looking for you know the body to develop, some of the shooting stuff to stick around, and meaningful progression as you would hope for any rookie, especially one of the youngest players in his class, right? Um, there's a lot of development ahead, but the the nuggets of, you know, what you can see happening with his game, how he reads the floor, and, you know, the top-end shooting talent and, and finishing talent too, especially since he's a bit bigger than a lot of motion shooters, especially how much he moves. Um, there's, there's a lot of fun stuff there. Hit on two out of the three, you know, I I'm hoping that they get three, man. If the Raptors, they end up conveying after sustaining a 15 game losing streak, that would be tough. Very, very tough, you know? So I, uh, I hope it's, if they get two out of the three, if they get three, I'm happy. Um, for anybody who wants to listen to draft talk noon tomorrow, myself, Trevon Heath, the Pull Up Trade podcast will be talking to Josh Codanera, professional scout, who, you know, for people like Slow Mo who really like Grady, Josh was a huge proponent of selecting him and really affected my analysis on Grady going forward. And then, of course, talking to scouts who really liked him at Summer League and kind of getting more of the, the intel on the guy, just really liking what I hear and what I see. But, yeah, we'll be talking guys in the six range or between like four – or I guess three through six, because if it's at seven, guess what? They don't have to pick. Um, we'll be talking guys around the, I think, 16 to 21 range, and that's like the Pacers pick, and we'll be talking back at uh, very start of the first round, or second round, sorry. So, And we'll, of course, talk Zach Eady, since people want information on Zach. But I, I warn you, I don't think Zach is very popular with either Trey or, or Josh. So we'll see. But I know he's a Canadian. He's a big Canadian college star. So people want to hear about him, obviously. So draft talk tomorrow. Um, we had another. Oh, yeah. Phoenix Play Z says, I'm late to the stream, but why does Toronto make their Spain action so obvious with the stack of the hand? Hand sign, even I can see it coming from a mile away. Well, it depends because the Raptors get into Spain differently. And, you know, I it's in here. I'm not going to go through all of that right now, though. We did one episode where I was breaking down the different ways that they, you know, have variations of Spain and how they use different actions to get into it. So you might be seeing like stack, you know, you might be seeing that, but the Raptors might have something else that they say that is a, a variation of how they get into it and how you get into it really affects how teams are going to guard stack and who the stack screener is really affects who it is. So a lot of teams in the NBA know what the other team is going to run. It's rarely like, Oh, <gasps> I'm so shocked at what's being run. Like, oh, there's a back screen behind me. This is crazy. There's like maybe like one out of 15, you know, screen. Yeah, Spain pick and rolls really get the guy surprised maybe. But it's just the fact that like <laughs> the Bucks piss their pants every time they had to <laughs> guard that action. And I don't know why, man. Like Spain is pretty popular in the NBA. 
it's not it shouldn't be a second nature to guard Spain as it is to guard the pick and roll, but they pissed this man. I don't know. I don't know what was going on with them, man. It was uh it was very, very interesting the way they guarded it. Um Somo says taking Edie with the 31st pick would be all right. Yeah, I don't think he'll be there. I mean, he has a ton of buzz, but yeah, 31, like seems like that's a, a, a good idea. Like it's it seems like a talent and and um impact get at 31, but who knows? Um Stephen Liu says Samson based on Michael Granger's story about Larry Tenenbaum selling his share to Bell and Rogers in 2026. What do you think the future of the Raptors is with Masai and Bobby? Um Masai, I don't know. There's rumors about stuff. And I'm hand to God, Allah, whoever, you know, whatever your relationship to spirituality is, whoever you, you think is, is sitting up there, hand to them. I I don't know any more about Rogers and like the high corporate palace intrigue than anybody else hearing things randomly online. I I don't know about like the the rogers relationship with Masai. i don't like you'll hear stuff about like oh it's souring you'll hear stuff about like conflicting viewpoints about where the team is going all that kind of stuff truthfully i have no idea maybe i'll I, i'll probably get grange on a podcast this summer i'll poke him around on a grange give me give me the dirt give give us give us the tea something like that maybe i'll bug mikey and then he'll hop on and we'll talk about that um yeah, I think that's kind of uh, that's uh, what happened with it. Phoenix Play Z says, weird question, but what happened to Sahal? Sahal, Oren, and Aiden don't do it anymore. Even Sahal was like doing the, the wrap up. He was doing it, but they were a rotating cast of guys doing it. And Sahal hadn't written for the site in like a really, really long time. But the, the rule with Raptors Republic is like once you're a part of it, you're always a part of it. You know, you can write or talk or whatever you really want to do you it will be endorsed and accepted by the site um but i i think they all just got busy doing other stuff like sahal is like a busy guy you know Oren is a busy guy aiden is a busy guy and there maybe wasn't enough money in it like it's i guess cheaper for me to be a one and they had a producer on every episode too so it's like a four-man operation after every game 82 times versus you know a schmuck like myself i just show up myself i handle everything the upload all that kind of stuff i'm like hey guys i'm back we're talking hoops so i think those guys were just like it was maybe too much work for what they were getting out of it maybe they're all too busy i didn't talk to anybody about it in depth to be quite honest despite talking to those guys i i, I really couldn't say but it's not a weird question and like i don't think anything happened to sahal he's just like not doing it um yeah that's kind of where I'm at. That feels like a podcast close to it, right? You know what I mean? HY says, no, we're taking Brawny at 31. I will ask you about Brawny. I'll definitely ask about Bra Brawny. It's it's intriguing. A lot of people coming out of high school thought that he was going to play himself into like the back end of the first round. All of the scouts I knew. Yeah, I have nail clippers here that I'm fidgeting with. Sorry. Um, anyway, I think that Bronny probably returns and tries to like get that um that value or whatever whatever perceived value etc up if i had to guess with like the transfer portal i saw a good meme today it was like that guy you know he's kind of like mean mugging or he's doing like he's trying to like you know make that sexy face it's an instagram poll he says who want me and it says 100 percent no it's like guys just a guy just being like i'm in the transfer portal and I'm in the NBA draft. Who who wants it? I'm available. You know, like <laughs> that's kind of uh that's where where I'm at. Nesta is saying Lee and Zach Eady need to come back home. Josh is gonna have thoughts on Lee that I'm sure everyone will be um, interested to hear. You know, I guess we'll 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 see what happens. But man, yeah. Uh, Phoenix plays E says Sixers versus Celtics ECF inevitable. I don't know, man. What about the Knicks? No, I'm just kidding. If they had Randall, you could get me to pick the Knicks going very far. But if the Sixers get to the ECF, that would be pretty fun. You know, Embiid finally, finally getting there. I would love 
because I really do like Joel Joel Embiid a lot. You know, it's um, it's I <laughs> the Sixers. I've wanted them to like pop off for a long time. You know, so I guess we'll see if it happens. Getting rid of Jimmy was so crazy. I can't believe they did that. Um, so we have a question here from my wife asked me why I keep watching the games when the Raps are losing. And I say I'm a fan and watch, will watch the growth of these young dinos. Yeah, man. I think it's like that's that's the appeal of the team. You know, that's kind of like you have to be somewhat interested in watching these guys develop because you can just like tune into another team and watch a higher quality of basketball. But you have this this tie. You're tethered to this team. And you want to see them do well, you know, you want to see, you want to see them find their way. And it's rewarding to watch guys progress. That's why, you know, there's so many players who you like you, you, you watch them take those steps and you, you can feel proud of these guys. You know, it is parasocial in some regard, but as long as you're not like a weirdo about it, it's just like, yeah, I like seeing that young man succeed. Like the young women in the NCAA, the young women in the WNBA, whatever type of basketball you partake in. You know, that's kind of where we're at. Um, Phoenix Plays E says uh, he's cheering for X Raptors in the playoffs. That's fair. I think so. Yeah. Hell yeah. Cheer for whoever you want. Cheer for the coolest team. Cheer for whoever. Guardian Transit says Joel is a goon. I think Joel is not a goon. I think that he took a kinesiology 150 class, went and played around on the mats, and they told him that to avoid injury, you have to disperse your kinetic energy. And I think he is the largest man who practices that I've ever seen. And like he, him dispersing his kinetic energy means that there's like a 60 pound limb flailing out and goon. I'm not so sure, but it, it is unfortunate that injuries happen around him. But I, I think it is his earnest attempt to displace kinetic energy because he's taught that man. That's like Russell Westbrook. He had less knee injuries than a lot of explosive guards because Russ was a guy who always, after he landed on a dunk, would stutter step or he would push off and slide and get to the ground. And so, like, that was that was what they looked at with Derrick Rose, right? Like, Derrick Rose, when he tore his ACL and kept doing it, was, like, these really explosive actions. And he'd always land with, like, one foot all the way up here and the other foot would like be landing on his heel on the ground and it just creates like this crazy tension and wear and tear and it's because all that kinetic energy travels down to where it's absorbing that shock in the knee in the ankle like these places right so you know it's 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 what it, that's you got to be able to do it we have we have two opposing viewpoints from slow-mo says i love the sixers because of dr j and barkley and beat is neither wow You've been watching since Dr. J. You watched a lot of hoops, slow-mo, unless you went back and watched. But if you've been watching since Dr. J, that's cool as hell. Um, there's there's a lot of readers at Raptors Republic who have been watching basketball forever. And the, the comments and the insights are always really cool to hear, you know, across eras and stuff like that. And beat is neither. I think that's that's true to some degree. Very different. Um, and then from Guardian Transit says, come on in the playoffs. He goes out of his way to hurt people. Problem is he gets hurt. I... I think I don't agree with that. I don't agree that he does it on purpose. But J.D. Hunt, or sorry, um, Jeff Beardwood says, does kinetic energy explain the airplane wings too? No. Joel, Joel the troll, like Joel the troll, he called himself that, right? Like he is, um, that's like his whole thing, right? You know, that he's being a troll. I like trolls. I think they're funny. I think Dylan Brooks, I think like he's very entertaining. I think players who aren't like who like entertain in that way, the pageantry of it. I did a podcast, I think like two and a half years ago with Yasmin Duella, and we talked about it was a loving basketball podcast series where I talked to a bunch of different people about why they loved basketball. And Yasmin, she said she loved the pageantry of basketball. And we talked about, you know, Joel Embiid is kind of a proxy for that. And he he really is pageantry, man. He's a bit of a wrestler out there. I I like it. I didn't like that, you know, he his flailing injured Scotty, but he didn't mean to do that. Just like, you know, Pascal broke his face. He broke Joel's face. Pascal didn't mean to do that either. Big bodies are colliding, you know? Yeah. 
Guardian Transit says you do not have to agree with me. LOL. I only say facts. Yeah. I, this is this is a perfectly harmless thing to um to disagree on too. Like, yeah, it's just opposing viewpoints. It doesn't. It's it's perception of actions that are at you know if you're being gracious towards Joel, like sloppy and reckless, and if if not, then then dangerous and malicious, right? Um, Kevin says hi, Raptors Republic. My first time in the live chat in this channel. Hello, Kevin. Welcome to the live chat. Welcome to the channel. I'm glad to see you've joined for um for for a win instead of one of the 15 losses. You know, um, yeah. Nabil, Nabil says raps get the dub. Draft season is delayed. Yeah. Unfortunately, or well, fortunately for you, Nabil, since I know you're a sicko for this stuff, we will be talking draft tomorrow. Like just draft, because I know there's a, a significant interest for that. So yeah. Zachary McNally25 says hi. Coco says no one knows the intent. That's certainly true. Hard, hard, hard to get it. We're not in that brain unless they come out and say it. It would be pretty crazy if Joel at the end of his career was like, I loved injuring guys. I was displacing my kinetic energy and I was, a you know, a, an absolute terror. Um, yeah. Phoenix plays East says, Samson, you don't have a specific team you're rooting for in the playoffs. Hmm. Well, I'll be doing some because Caitlin Cooper and I have been I think the dream is for both of us someday to do like an NBA wide podcast. There's definitely there's an appetite for a podcast where we work together. It's just we have to find an app enough of an appetite and like a place that can house it that will pay well enough. So we want to work together because people like that and we enjoy it. So we're going to try and do that. However, the v the vehicle for that this season is I'm going to do some some coverage of the Pacers, I guess, playoff run for her Patreon. And then um, I think that'll be Pacer stuff. So some people watching that, like you, you might not care. Right. So and that's fine. So there'll be some Pacer stuff. But like, so I hope the Pacers play fun games that I get to cover, but whether they win or not, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, who, who do I want to win? So I like a lot of teams because I like a lot of players and I'm a little bit biased because I get to talk to these players and talk to these coaches and stuff like that. But it's uh, Boston is obviously like very well in it. Philly. I with Embiid healthy, I think Philly and Boston are two realistic title hopefuls. Nobody else in the East, I think, has a chance. And I guess like maybe I want to see Darius Garland ball out and have a really fun series or something like that. Orlando and New York are both gritty. I would really enjoy watching them. It'd be cool to see one of those teams get to the second round, you know, because those are such they well, New York has had more success lately, but Orlando, especially to break through, would be really interesting. Maybe a big Mark Hill Fultz game. Um, Indy, I, I'd like to see do well, probably. Let's see. The, the top four, man, the top five, almost every West team I like. Minnesota is awesome. I think that's a really fun team. I like that they went in early on Ant. I like that they went and got Gobert. Everyone made fun of that trade, but they knew what they were doing. And I, I saw the vision as well. It made sense, right? Um, and like whether Gobert was truly worth that amount, I know people will like, you know, you can count the money and, you know, you can, you can try and get like, you can try and figure it out. But Minnesota, I think is a really cool team. I'd like to see them do well. I love watching Denver. Denver plays beautiful basketball. Great. OKC, if Shea just like shot makes them to the end of it all, that's beautiful. And same with J-Dub. But I don't think they have the juice, you know, this season to go all the way, you know. Uh, the Clippers, I like a lot because I really like Kawhi. I really like James Harden and I really like Russell Westbrook and and like Norm and Terrence Mann and Zubats. Like, I like all those guys. It's a, they just have to play like more convincing conviction like basketball with more conviction. Dallas, I mean, Luke and Kyrie is like unbelievable hoops. And the way that they have to figure out, like they're nine and one in their last ten. The way that they have to figure out how to like outscore teams and how to contend on defense, they play some interesting hoops over there. Um, Phoenix, 
not that interested in Phoenix, to be quite honest with you. Although Devin Booker's progression as like a playmaker is one of the better ones in the NBA. The Pelicans, they lost four in a row, but I love the Pelicans. I'll, I think like I'll give like a 4% chance like the Pelicans could win it all this year until the day I until they no longer have like Zion and Trey Murphy the third. But the Pelicans rock. And then like you what? Yeah, like Sacramento, the Lakers, Golden State. H- well, Houston's kind of out of it now. They lost four in a row. It's over. Utah lost 10. I don't know. I'm basically naming every team. I'm trying to have my cake and eat it too. I just want good hoops, I think, to um to answer your question, Phoenix Play Z. Coco says OKC has fantastic vibes for the future. They totally do. They gotta sort out um the giddy situation, I think. Probably like move on from that. I think that's that's kind of like and they and they should have tried. Well, I don't think it was possible for them to do if they're looking to get value, right? I don't think it was possible for them to do that trade deadline, but I thought OKC made, made a mistake not going in at the trade deadline. Like, yeah, they did like, oh, we have Gordon Hayward. Maybe something happens there, but that's like cowardice, I think. You have an MVP level player. Go try and win the chip. See if it see if it happens. Beat like beat. Go after it. But they didn't. They're playing it safe. Teams that win, they rarely play it safe. And it's not like they can, like the picks, cash them. How, how much better do you need the team to be? What prospect are you waiting on? Cooper Flag? I don't know. Really? That's that's kind of my view on that. I've been talking non-Raptor stuff for like 15 minutes. I always worry that like the, the podcast listeners are just like tuning out, of course. But, uh, you know, I guess the retention rates are totally good. So whatever. Um, yeah, I'll leave the podcast there. Thanks for thanks for tapping in, everybody. I'm gonna go eat some food. I haven't eaten in hours. I didn't eat enough today at all. I gotta go take care of myself. <laughs> all right, everybody. Um, I'll be back here in 12 and a half hours with Trevon Heath, Josh Codera to talk draft. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. They won. Big win. Not on pace to set, they can't set the record for most losses in a row anymore this season. They simply can't. Pretty good. They won. Okay. Love y'all. And uh, yeah, whether you got into this in the morning or at night, like the video, subscribe, blah, 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 all the good stuff. Okay. Have a blessed day and 